recorded. Okay, uh, I think we can get started. So I've been shared a few project ideas uh, like a few hours ago. So we'll just at least set up the pace on how we can think along these. I'm just typing it here first. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, like this is pretty much what I've got from the team. So at this point, I'm not sure how deep they want the solutioning to be made. Um, but the two uh, ones that I, I kind of understand, which we can start a discussion on, uh, is the splitwise on-chain, which I think is uh, quite self-explanatory just by the name itself, and the Sapto sign one. So the Sapto sign one is basically a DocuSign on Aptos. And this poker game engine and the randomized slot machine uh, plugin, uh, not exactly sure what um, what they want as a deliverable here, uh, but the other two ideas are something that we can uh, start thinking on how we can structure this. So just give me a minute, let me actually, uh, in the meantime, just pull up some more uh, documents and stuff. Uh, great to hear, Alice. Uh, I would love to know what other folks were also thinking, how we can think along all of these lines. So uh, first, let's just discuss a little bit around this Apto sign thing. Um, we can work around like a very simple uh, baseline implementation for this. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so I think this should be sharing a doc, uh, doc developer documentation. Um, okay, so before we start on the signing transaction part and stuff, uh, I want to understand from you folks, uh, what is the understanding of IPFS or decentralized storage right now uh, for you folks? Anyone else wants to talk? What's the basic uh, knowledge around IPFS? So here is the base idea. I'll just uh, explain it once, how we can think around this app to assign a uh, uh, particular project. Yep, 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 that's correct, that is. Uh, so for this app to assign thing, uh, what we are going to think about, um, actually, why don't I just spin up a notes online and just share it with you. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, this will do. Let's just do this. Okay, so as I said, I do not currently have the idea on what is the, uh, up till what depth they want to uh, do this. Uh, but let's just ourselves try to sketch out like what can be a brief understanding on uh, how we can make this. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Cool. So we have this Apto sign idea. 
And here, what we are talking about is that we'll have a document, um, just like how DocuSign works. And then uh, with the document, so we can have um, basically uh, some signers for that particular document, some X number of signers for this document. Uh, once sign doc is complete and can be shared. Okay, so this can be a little brief of what we are thinking of. Okay, so uh, yeah, great explanation, Helen, uh, to this. Okay, now, um, so I'm assuming that was they are saying Aptos sign DocuSign on Aptos. Uh, not again again uh, sure what is the requirement but first of all we need to think of creating a document uh, and um, putting it on decentralized storage because if uh, so this is my idea of if i have to build something uh, in in web3 then i would use decentralized storage over anything else um, uh, so one advanced uh, feature over this can be to do it as a uh, like a private file, or what I'm trying to say is the um, IPFS content itself would be encrypted in nature. So it it essentially is private. It can only be accessible to a few uh, people. Okay, um, that is one. Second part of this uh, piece is um, retrieval uh, from IPFS. Um, again, here also, uh, first of all, you need to make this file a pinned file, otherwise uh, it might just get uh, like unpinned and you might not be able to access it, okay? So we need to do it in a pinned file manner, so you can go to Pinata, um, NFT.storage, uh, Web3.storage, all of these services you can look, uh, that can do that for you, okay? Uh, then the third part of this is uh, the actual uh, signing part, okay? So in the signing part, uh, then we are talking about um, basically uh, two things can be done here. Two things, okay. One is an actual signing, uh, an actual uh, signing, just like how you see on DocuSign. If if that is, if they do want a physical uh, sign to also happen, uh, to happen on the doc. Uh, so like like basically change the file. Uh, so if that happens, basically, uh, we also need to uh, then update the file as, as well. So now we'll basically have a new uh, CID, whatever. Okay. Um, other, and otherwise, what we can just talk about is this. We have this file and we are just doing uh, the uh, blockchain signing. Right? So it's uh, very similar to when you were doing in our first transaction uh, tutorial on aptos.dev. Uh, I'll just go back and show you. But if you remember, we were doing something like a sign and submit transaction. That was basically what we were uh, calling. Um, so this is one way that we can uh, do this, where uh, in this particular uh, like uh, link that I shared, creating a sign transaction, it also goes into depth on how you can think about uh, signing by like multi-sig uh, authentication. So if there are multiple parties and then they sign, uh, only then certain things go through whatever. So you can set up an architecture like uh, that as well. Uh, again, uh, as I said, I will need to understand, get more uh, inputs from their team uh, to understand this, but this is basically what uh, we can take from that. Uh, let me actually share my screen and show that uh, your first transaction example to show you how we are thinking around it. Give me a second. Um, okay. Yep, okay. So just sharing another window. Um, we'll come back to this and add some more stuff here. So if you can see, uh, when we were doing our your first transaction uh, dem uh, demo, then in this, 
uh, we basically had this, uh, I think, transferring some tokens and all. So if you look over here, this is where uh, the thing happens. So generating the raw transaction with certain payload, uh, generating the uh, BCS transaction, it goes and then it submits. So this is exactly what is covered in that uh, link that I shared as well. And then we'll wait for the transaction to happen and then we'll get like a, a success or not. Uh, we can set that and check. Okay. So this is essentially the lines that you would need to call over your um, IPFS uh, file. Um, there are more things that you can do as well. If you look here, um, this is actually what we were trying. Uh, I'm just trying to find where's the payload for this. Okay, but just uh, in this, just like try to find the payload bit. Uh, if you remember, we had done this for two more examples. Uh, so I probably would have this in my uh, system, or maybe I can find it through their GitHub as well. Uh, and find a link here, then I can probably show you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me actually just open this and find where is the payload. Yeah, okay. I found something um, good over here only for your example. Let me show you this one. This one itself uh, should be a very good example. And uh, this is something that if you uh, understand the concept, you can also think around uh, creating a normal multi-sig wallet. For example, something like a Gnosis save uh, on Aptos. Um, that would also be a very interesting thing that we can build. So here, uh, I'll also link this uh, in our chat, but here is a multi-sig transaction TypeScript file. So all of this is in you are done with uh, using their SDK. So you don't necessarily need to do like a, a contract or anything, uh, unless you have certain functionality that you want to add on this app to sign thing, some specific thing that happens, um, or it's like a smart contract and an agreement is required for it. You don't need to do that. So here, if you see uh, this particular example, it is demonstrating the process of moving test coins from one multi-sync account to a signal single signature account. So this is the part that is important, moving test coins from multi-sync. So it's like if the, uh, whatever is defined as like the parties, uh, if that many parties out of, let's say two out of three sign it, only then that movement of test coins should happen. And you can also put this as your condition for considering the document to be complete. Like if there are three signers and all of three of them a sign only then uh, you consider the document to be complete and then the document uh, is again sent back to the folks okay so you can actually build like an entire product around it um, everyone gets the file email just like how it happens uh, in the case of uh, DocuSign so if you here see these are the standard lines we have our client and our faucet client uh, we are creating three key pairs and in account instances over here and right now they have created this uh, multi uh, e to Two double five one nine public key. Uh, so this again created two out of three, meaning that two out of three. Uh, this thing uh, require is like signatures are required for that particular transaction to be executed. At least two accounts must have signed the transaction. Okay. So uh, this is like uh, you can find out more about this particular uh, class, what it entails. Uh, just the example that I shared with you before the link. Um, it explains the multi this thing as well. One second. Let me see if I can find that and talk a little bit about that as well. Yep, yep, yep. Right. 
So uh, just for a reference, I'm going to share the interface with you. I'm pasting the interface code over here. This is what you will find when you go inside the app tools, uh, like core app tools SDK, and like this is where what you where you'll find how the how they have defined it themselves. Like they are storing the public keys basically, and then they have another interface which is the signature where they're storing the signatures. Um, and then they have a multi-sig authenticator interface as well. Um, give me a second. Uh, just one second, folks. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is basically the interface. Uh, now coming uh, back to our uh, uh, shared screen. So what is happening here is, um, first of all, they are creating a multi-sig public key. Uh, and because I just showed you that this uh, particular uh, interface takes a list of the public keys. So here we are to, in, to initialize this particular uh, thing. We are passing all of the public keys of all of these new accounts that we just created. Okay. So this is the first step. Then second thing that we are doing is they are first trying to, so this is, uh, this is basically to build the transaction. That's why the class name is also transaction builder types. Okay. Uh, you can see like on the right side, like what all are uh, the instances here for that. Um, then they are getting the uh, authentication key from this uh, public key, uh, this array, the list of the public key. So each actor's account stores an authentication key. Uh, so through this, the initial account address can be derived. Okay. Uh, then through this, they are deriving a multi-sig account address. So this is similar to if you see in your safe, right? Your safe itself, like our Nosif safe itself, has its own address that uh, people use, and that's the one that uh, if you uh, basically have uh, instead of an uh, EOA, if you have set that as the account and if some transaction com comes over there, that implies that whoever are the multi-sig owners, some X out of Y have to, ex uh, to have to execute, like have to sign that to make that transaction happen or get it executed. So this is the similar logic. We are deriving uh, the multi-sig account address from there. And then we're funding this particular multi-sig account uh, address with one app. So if you see above, none of the other accounts have got uh, funded. Like we are just funding the multi-sig account over here. Okay. Uh, then the next thing that we are talking about is uh, getting the account resources. This we have also done in our previous tutorial. These lines you would have seen, uh, where we are just uh, checking whether uh, whatever funding of the faucet uh, we have done, whether that is actually correct or not, the balance amount. So we are just comparing or asserting both the values in this case. Okay. Uh, then they are creating another new account called account four. Uh, so this account is basically created to actually, uh, because in the first we have uh, talked about moving test coins from one multi account to a single signature account. So here this single signature uh, account is being represent represented by this account four. Okay. So then we are talking about uh, three types of transaction payload. Uh, if you see, we, we would have used this entry function one. Um, I'm sure uh, you would remember in the payloads that we sent. So exactly this one is being used here, uh, entry function payload. We had also checked this on the TypeScript a reference. Um, just search this, you can find more information. Um, so here they are just like uh, passing what is the module name, what is the module function, uh, and again, like uh, the receiver account address and the amount to transfer. So these are like the uh, arguments for this particular function. Uh, the coin type to transfer, this is a type data or something. I forgot the exact name, but uh, I think Alice had also asked uh, a doubt around this. But yeah, this this particular one is empty, and then it's just the arguments that we are sending. So all of this information becomes our entry function payload. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we need to do. So uh, instead of the things that uh, we are doing here, you can basically modify it and make it something else as well for your DocuSign use case, uh, you can maybe, so for example, DocuSign does not just have the signing thing, right? It does also takes into account certain other fields or information that is being filled. So maybe you can create a structure 
uh, and you can pass some more information together here instead of transfer this function becomes something else you can make a smart contract with uh, for this as well to store that additional information that is being shared uh, or you can do it uh, in some other manner as well uh, like that is basically your uh, whatever freedom you have over it to design it the way that you want okay uh, but yeah this is the way uh, they are doing it and here if you um, one second yeah so here then they are getting information like the account and the chain id um sequence number they're getting from that uh and then they are actually building this particular transaction if you see uh, the sender account address is taking the multi sec account address and not because obviously we want all of the three accounts to come together and together constructed as a uh, like a like an like a transaction that is executable from a multi sig account that's why it's being sent like this uh, and then they are sending some more information like the sequence number the payload all of this so this is just like the formatting for the raw transaction so if you go over here you can actually find how the constructor also looks it will take these things as well gas unit to spend gas price per unit uh, expiration time stamp like if it is not executed within this time it will get expired i think this is again something that you can use for example in docusign also you would have seen that that link uh, to sign expires after some time uh, so you can do something similar that if you try to do this signing in all after a particular stand, uh, time of point, uh, point of time then it would not essentially work uh, this this would not get executed right so this is something that you can also build and then they are actually showing how this is happening now final this uh, transaction so we have this raw transaction now uh, they are using the sign uh, the transaction builder uh, this one is uh, the multi we just like the uh, like we'll just take the signing message uh, i can maybe show you a reference for this to the docs but yeah it will just take the signing message inside this we are just uh saying that uh, do this for account 1 and 3 so only account 1 and 3 are going and doing it why because we defined in the beginning that 2 uh, out of 3 uh, can do it um the sign part right so here only account 1 and 3 are doing it uh, then we are creating a bitmap uh, which basically talks about which ones have done it so because it's account 1 and 3 that's the reason you see 0 and 2 uh if it would have been account 1 and 2 it would have been 0 and 1 if it would have been account 2 and 3 it would have been 1 and 2 uh here because we are talking about array values which are index at 0 okay uh so yeah so that's the bitmap that we have constructed uh and then we are going to actually do the signature bit we saw this in our interface also you can look at look at it over here where it captures a list of signatures just like how we did for the public keys at the top here we are actually just going to do it uh, for the signatures uh, so this um signing the sig hex string one that you are getting from this buffer that is being converted into a u in u in date uh, array and it's being uh, passed over here and as well as the bitmap which basically talks about uh, which public keys are the ones that have done it so here also uh, if you see in our chart there is a bitmap uh, which goes over here and talks about if nth bit value is one the nth signature should be provided in signatures uh so yeah that's how they have defined it um and then uh, we are then returning the complete signature so this is the way that it's been done so we are then signing uh, from our transaction builder this raw transaction this entire cons that's been defined over here um and then we are submitting this signed Uh, transaction over here, waiting for the transaction to get completed, uh, and then again because the transfer has happened, we are uh, looking at our balance tokens, uh, comparing it with account four. So because we just made the transfer um, over here, we have to find one second. Yeah, so here in this we have defined the amount that is to be transferred. So this amount has been transferred. So after doing that, we can just do a comparison between what is the balance in the multi-sig and what is the balance uh, in this particular account. So another, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is how we have built this transaction builder. You might ask, where is this cons being used where we are setting up all of these things? It's being used over here um, to sign this particular transaction. Uh, and then it's just uh, submitting the transaction and awaiting and then getting and then comparing. So this is the way you can think along the lines of how you can uh, create uh, any sort of uh, multi-sig uh, infrastructure for that matter. Uh, but yeah, this is like a very good example of how we can get started. Um, so what I would want you folks to do is basically ask if you folks have any questions. And uh, if not, I would love for you folks to just basically, uh, I'll share this particular piece of code, run this, see how this works and get me the output for this. So I'm just going to paste this here. Uh, in the meantime, I will add a couple of more lines to our notes as well. Let me reshare our screen back to the notepad tab. Uh, okay, so here we mentioned all of these things um, with the blockchain signing part. So adding a couple of things to keep in mind, to keep in mind, uh, timestamp expiry uh, of the link, just like how you see over DocuSign, uh how to identify document is complete uh this is something that you can do uh, based on whatever people have signed um uh, and some and some cda followed by it it can be anything that you want some call to action that happens uh, or uh, some sort of a signaling a cd or some sort of a notice that happens post this um, and you can also think from a perspective of um, if you are talking about the IPFS file, so instead of this uh, just being a file, you can make it uh, a JSON which points to this file with the JSON containing additional information, JSON containing additional info about this file for example whenever someone is signing maybe it can contain the signatures uh, like the wallet addresses that are signed or something it can contain and then it can get updated or some properties that you want to show all of those things can be here okay so this is another thing that you can think of um, Another thing is basically to think of how can you expose this uh, uh, to other people, right? For example, how can you build something like a claim, uh, request and claim architecture? Think along the lines of um, someone is requesting, someone is requesting for a signature on a file, um, so this can be like a function call itself that you can think of. Uh, someone wants the final uh, IPFS link, maybe like the complete one. So you can think of it as a uh, URI, get URI function function. Right. Uh, and it can be anything else as well, right? Uh, if it's expired, uh, how to re, um, re link or resend the doc, right? So make it active basically. So you can create something like uh, make active uh, as a function call. So these are a couple of things that you can think of from a smart contract level uh, that you can do uh, to make this particular app to sign application. Um, but yeah, let's let's take a uh, let's just try out this particular example. Uh, I, I want to see the output that you folks are getting, um, and then we can continue uh, along the lines of discussing a uh, little bit more on this if it's not clear or we can discuss the split wise example as well so yeah let's just i'll just wait for a few minutes for you folks to attend this
Uh, I feel like I'm asking to attend these particular examples that I've given in the last thing. I'm asking you to try this basically on your system and give the output. It's a multi-sig transaction which basically transfers some tokens uh, from a multi-sig created from account 1, 2, and 3 to account 4. Hi, Kaveen. Basically, we are working, uh, you are discussing this Aptos sign, DocuSign on Aptos. I have given this particular GitHub example that I just ran through, which talks about creating a multi set transaction uh, because we are talking about signing transactions for this Aptos sign example, right? So, through this example, it's clear on how you can create something that can enable you to create, um, like, signing by multiple parties and then how to make sure that the doc document is complete how to uh, enable time expiry uh, and all of this logic over it so that's the reason i've uh, shared it and i've asked uh, you folks to basically uh, start with uh, this example and get the output for it and put it here
Yeah, I mean, that's the message that I pasted in the beginning. So I have just received this message from the team, uh, which I've shared with everyone. I haven't received like a doc or any format as such. I've just received this message. Um, so I can't share much about it. That's why I'm just creating an idea based on what I understand uh, on how we can do it. Uh, they have said that they will give the talk and description and stuff in a few more days. So as soon as I get it, I'll be able to share it with you folks. Give me a second, folks. I'll just go and quickly grab my charger. I see that someone has shared the. Uh, yep. Terrell has shared the output for this code, uh, which says something along the lines of the coins. Uh, and after it has been transferred, one to three coins that we saw in the example in UNT, then what is the final balance for the account? So, yeah, if you want, uh, have you folks uh, tried out uh, NFT log storage or file log storage, uh, these things before? If not, we can actually quickly uh, spin up like uh, an example, like maybe start editing here only uh, and start creating a baseline implementation. But before that, I want everyone to run this multi six transaction code. Um, so you can let me know however you want to do it. If you want me to go deeper into this after an example, or we can take take up some other idea and discuss. Either way works. Let me know. Hi, Kranti. Uh, sure, I can discuss very quickly what was discussed. Tyler has said that he has used an empty log storage and empty log storage. Uh, so, so, okay, Tyler, because you're already through with this, why don't you add a few lines to this particular example where what you can do is you can use some sort of a, a file package uh, where Someone basically selects a file. Uh, this is just a script, so it's fine. You don't need to write now code like a front end. But someone um, just uploads a file from their like uh, local files, um, and then you just uh, store that file on uh, IPFS. You can use the same uh, name that the file has originally. Uh, and once that uh, storing is done. Uh, then in this um, uh, in this payload and all right all of this stuff you can maybe add somewhere like you know uh, whatever the message that is going like right now we are just running a transfer function but ideally what we would want is that you write some other function which says that uh, hi i am signing this particular file uh, with CID, blah, 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 something like this you can do, right? So you can maybe start writing something like that. Uh, till then, I'll very quickly just go over uh, the rewind uh, as Kranti mentioned. So just give me a minute, folks. 
also would advise everyone else to start working on the output. I just have the output from Parallel. Okay. So, currently, what we are discussing right now is that um, in the examples, uh, example ideas, there's an idea called Aptos sign. So, we are discussing DocuSign on Aptos. Okay. So in this DocuSign on Aptos example, um, we first are looking at how a multi-sig transaction works because we are talking about uh, in, in any document that there, there are going to be multiple signers. So uh, we, we need to see how we can create uh, this multiple signer sort of a engagement um, and how we can note that the document is complete, maybe change a few things here and there, whatever flexibility is required for that. We can think along this from this uh, in this manner. Uh, so, in this particular example, what they are doing is they are uh, transferring uh, some uh, x amount of tokens uh, from a multi-sig account, which is run by these three accounts: account one, account two, account three, which come together to form this multi-sig. And it's a two out of three multi-sig, meaning that if, if uh, only two parties sign out of the three, then also the transaction will go through. So the 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 criteria being that at least two out of three uh, sign okay so uh, and then some amount is transferred to this account for if that happens okay so we'll just see quickly how the code for it works if you see in the chat i have pasted this uh, interface which shows how this multi um uh, ed two double five one nine thing uh, works uh, uh, the, the the interfaces for that so initially, we have defined the client and the faucet client. We are creating three accounts. Uh, then we are creating this multi-sig public key. Uh, this particular class, you can see the, that's one of the interfaces I have shared, which takes uh, the list of the public keys that we got from our three accounts. And through that, we get our multi-sig public key. Uh, from that, we can basically get our auth key, which comes from the from multi, uh, this particular function. And then we are finally getting the multi-sig account address, which is basically uh, similar to uh, what you can find in the um, like the Gnosis safe, the address that is there. So if you give this address to someone and they try to make a transaction on that address, what happens is that uh, like a request comes to all of the multi-sig account owners. And if some X out of Y basically sign it, then the transaction goes through. So this is that auth key to derive address is giving us that multi-sig account address. And on that multi-sig, we are funding uh, one app to use, not on an individual account or something, on this particular multi-sig account. Next, we are checking whether the balance is correct or not, because we made a transfer, we are just running an assert statement, and making sure that the amount that we have transferred in terms of coins is actually one app to use. Then we are creating a new account, account four, uh, and we are creating the entry function payload to actually make the transaction call. Uh, so this account is basically the account to which we will be transferring from our multi-sig. Um, and in this entry function payload, we are defining what is the module name and the function and the arguments that we need to pass in this case, what is the receiver's account address and the amount that needs to be transferred. Uh, so here, receiver's account address is account four dot address and the amount that needs to be transferred is one, two, three. Okay. So then uh, the next line, if you see, it just talks about getting information about the account and the chain ID, uh, a sequence number. Uh, so all of this we are getting, and uh, then we are building a raw transaction, which is taking uh, the account address, the sequence number that we got from above, the payload, the maximum gas, gas price per unit, as well as an expiration timestamp. If the uh, it, if it is not executed within this, then the transaction is discarded. So I was saying that you can actually make use of this expiration timestamp in uh, your uh, DocuSign example as well. And you can set it to something uh, like one week or something like that, after which if they try to attempt, then it expires, because that is also how you see DocuSign uh, does if you try to attempt to sign after a particular time. Um, then we are saying that uh, in, our, in this example, account one and three, sign the transaction, not account two. And why? Because only two out of three uh, folks are required to make this happen. So uh, this is the signing message that, that they are uh, like sending here, uh, sign. Then we're getting sig hex string one and sig hex 
uh, string three, uh, which are signing this. Um, so this is easy. I think this is where also you can modify, by the way, Pelle, uh, if you want to send some particular information over here. Uh, just check what is being sent over here. Uh, maybe just do uh, a log and just get uh, what is that information being sent here and how you can modify it. Okay. Um, but yeah, then you're getting, then you're setting the bitmap. Bitmap talks about which are the public keys that are signed the transaction. Since it's account one and three, that's why it's uh, zero and two. Uh, if it would have been one and two, it would have been two. Uh, sorry. Uh, if it would have been one and two, it would be zero and one. If it, if it would have been two and three, it would have been one and two. Uh, so uh, then we are just send, creating our uh, this particular complete signature, uh, which is again this interface takes a list of signatures along with the bitmaps. So that is what we are passing, uh, getting that particular signature, and then uh, we are creating this like using this entire transaction builder which we just defined over here to sign this particular raw transaction. And then uh, this is what we get from that BCS transaction. Submitting this signed BCS transaction, waiting for the transaction to go through. Uh, once it's through, then we are again comparing our resources, which means our Aptos account balance. Uh, so because we did this transfer, we can actually just go ahead and check the balance of our multi-sig as well as the balance of account four. And uh, here account four now will have uh, this one, two, three uh, thing that you can see in the uh, uh, output that they will share. Uh, that that many have been transferred uh, in terms of the coins and the rest is there in the multi set. So yeah, that's the example that we are looking at. So again, I'll wait for a few more minutes for you folks to attempt this, like basically uh, spin this up and run this and get me the output for this.
everyone uh checking back and i don't see anyone else's uh, response to the output for the multi sig uh link i shared let me share it again and give you both answer but uh, basically want you to just get me the output for this Ah, oh, cool. I can see Alice has posted. No worries, Alice. I guess you'll have friends for a lot of friends from there. Uh, okay. Waiting for other folks to also try this out.
Yes. Uh, no, these are the main projects that they want to be built out. Honestly, this is the only thing that I have received from the team yet. So uh, I'm not sure to what depth they want these projects to be built out. These these are like you can pick any one of these ideas. You don't need to do all of them. Uh, these are not practice projects. These are main projects, but at the same time, I do not know how well they want the idea to be sketched out. So yeah. Also, Kranti, in your example, your multi-sig account balance itself is less. I don't know why. Not sure where uh, that five. Uh, yeah. The, the expected and this thing should match like how it does for a, a, the other folks as well, unless you have like done a transfer right before it. Might want to check your code. Mm. Okay, Gandhi. What about other folks? What are you folks working on? Any one participants? Vijay, Abhishek, Tomiva, Kavin, Chakri, Kedab. Where are your output folks? Cool, Abhishek. Uh, take your time and um, are you up here waiting?
Hi, Tamira. Uh, have you installed the dot uh, env npm package? Basically, you have to install this package. Um, if you see in the code in the beginning, this process dot env dot dot aptos node URL. This will be coming in from your dot env file. So just check um, that particular thing. If dot env is installed and configured. Um, yep. Yeah. You are, uh, and also you've not shared the error itself. You have just shared import dot env from dot env getting this error. Can you share the error, the actual error?
to me what this dot common is basically in the same directory so if you see um yeah here common dot ts basically you can just copy these things from here let me actually paste it in the chat for other folks to also um use otherwise you can actually add it your to your dot env file as well either ways works just try it and set it Hi, Bumiwa. Circling back in um, on this uh, dot slash common dot js thing, you can just remove it, and you can take the values from here that's being used. For example, if you see if I move back to this piece of code, then you can see this after coin store is coming from there. So you can just instead of that set the value in the main file only. That should be fine. Just wait for a few more minutes. In the meantime, Terry is just checking in with you, buddy. Like, how's it going with the IPFS um, link stuff that we just discussed for adding the file? Uh, we can have other folks also uh, basically add your code snippet in there, uh, this thing. And so I'll just wait for a minute. Oh, wow, you have already created a front end. Nice. Perfect. Uh, I don't think if we will be able to take up another idea. Uh, but for the split wise, I'll just do a normal discussion. Um, also, I do want to share this with you. Let me just do a
Where is this? Okay. Yeah, for the splitwise thing, it's basically going to be, again, a very um, similar uh, process only as compared to, like, compared to this multi-sig thing. Uh, what you can do is um, you can have a concept of basically a group or like maybe start with the individuals and then go to group. Uh, you will have a resource just like how you saw in the to-do list example which contained the task. You can have like an expense list uh, which will contain the expenses. The expense list would be a resource and it will contain all of the expenses which can be removed. Uh, in, a, in or remove basically meaning setter. So you can have a status maybe around every expense. Uh, and uh, whenever someone is adding an expense, they can uh, decide, again, uh, first assume just for one person. So that's not complicated. It's either paid uh, by them uh, for the other person or it's split between the two people. So there's an option to set up that logic that how the division is happening. Uh, that is just logic. That is just pure logic on any language like Java, Python, whatever, which you have to. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so which you have to convert to um, a move contract uh, language essentially. Um, but once you are through with that, um, what you would need to do next is, uh, yeah, just like whenever someone is adding, that can just be a transaction. Uh, and status change can be a transaction. Uh, and you can use the Aptos indexer, which is the GraphQL example that we saw, uh, to index and get back certain information uh, that you can show on like a front-end dashboard. So this is how the flow would look like. Uh, I'll go deeper into it on how we can structure that. Maybe we can do a sample uh, creation for that in the next class. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll just wait. Uh, for Tomiwa to also once attempt this example. Hey Tomiwa, uh, just checking back on the dot slash common thing. Uh, for Tehelil, the code that we are referencing here is basically an IPFS uh, document uh, upload uh, thing that he has created, and he has also even created a front end for it. Uh, we are moving closer to like if you have to actually create a DocuSign, how it would look like. Uh, so now the next step for Terrell can just be like changing the signing messages that are there in the multi-sig, uh, this thing as well, if you see over here, um, the signing message and all this can be modified. Uh, even this uh, file can, along with some metadata, can be stored in uh, another IPFS JSON file that can be modified. Um, the timestamp that is mentioned over here can be changed. Where is it? Uh, this time, time can be changed. This is just for 10 seconds. This can be changed. Um, and this function, transfer function, can be uh, like changed with something like upload file or something like that. Like whatever is that uh, for you to like save. Maybe all of the files uh, that are uploaded attached to a particular account address or something else that you might want to set up. You can do that over here. So yeah, that is how you can basically change this base code. Again, we'll wait for a few minutes. Other folks who have completed this can try doing the IPFS spinning thing. Uh, the packages that you would need are basically NFT storage or uh, Web3 storage uh, that can enable you to. Uh, let me just type it out. Yeah, to upload uh, IPFS, uh, up upload a file in IPFS and spin it. So these are all also NPM packages that you can use and set it up.
Okay, perfect. Uh, so, Meeva, just waiting for your. Um... Ah, okay, I see you've shared. Perfect. Okay, so. In that case, I guess. Uh, uh, do you want to share the edit over here, your front end? Just wait for a few minutes. We'll just go over your uh, code for web three storage and FT dot storage, um, and then we'll just wrap this up. In the next class, we can take up the split wise example. We can actually create like a base uh, implementation for that.
Okay, so based on what Tyrell has shared, I'm just gonna uh, take a few lines. Uh, that you can just use. Basically, you need to import this uh, repository, sorry, this package, and um, and then based on the token that you have, you can do this. I'm just going to share this. This token is basically the API key that you can get. This is how you can get the file. So here you can just put the document that you want. Uh, but instead of this, you can actually make an interactive UI for this where uh, it's like a drag and drop interface. Some file gets there, and then it gets added and stored with the CID. And then you can do some signing or whatever logic you want over it. All right, folks, I think it's time to wrap up this class. And there's this, uh, any doubts or anything that you folks are stuck in, feel free to ask in the chat. I'll wait for a few minutes. But if it's cool, then let's wrap up the session. And I'll see you next time with the split price example that we discussed. Uh, if you want, you folks can actually start attempting that as well. Um, as I said, the logic would be an expense list, like the to-do list thing that we created, uh, where expense list is the resource, uh, the expenses are the struct, um, and you can define every expense to have a status, which basically talks about unsettled or settled, um, and it will have other fields as well, for example, the amount, and it can have uh, a field which is a list, again, which takes who, amongst whom the uh, this thing will be shared, the expense. Uh, which can be uh, like some wallet addresses over there. Um, and yeah, that's based on that, you can have the computation uh, to show how the split happens. So yeah, that kind of stuff, you can just set it up. Um, and then you have some functions to update the status. For example, if someone wants to settle, uh, then they can do that. And uh, accordingly, the amount owed, et cetera, would change. You can get the variables from the Aptos indexer. So yeah, that's how you can think around the split files app and start building on it. A uh, simple example would be just like a one-to-one -one sort of a transaction. Uh, more uh, bigger, uh, this thing can be like a group-based transaction. Uh, so yeah, you can think along both the lines and you can start building it out. Cool. Any questions, any doubts?
Cool. Uh, I guess then that's it for today's class. Thank you everyone for joining. And uh, in the next class, we'll do the splitwise example. Um, yep. And probably by then, I'll have more clarity on the project ideas as well. Thank you everyone for joining in. Take care. Bye-bye.